Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference Wall. I hope you all are having a wonderful day today. I know I am. Um, today's vlog, I'm excited with you guys because I'm going to be sharing with you all for the month of February, which is Black History Month. Power to my peoples. Happy happy Black History Month to everybody out there that celebrates. Um, but for me, it's, it's Black History Month every day, 365, 24-7 for me. So, um, uh, but I am happy to be celebrating, you know, my culture and my history, you know, and our Black History uh, Month and talking about my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, which brings us to why I'm doing this vlog. I'm going to be sharing with you guys um, my third story time uh, um, with my new book, uh, The Precedent paradigm shift sections what we'll be talking about today um, which details on controversial events and deaths that have occurred within today's time frame for instance George Floyd Breonna Taylor you know Tamir Rice um, who else Trayvon Martin you know those names that will never be forgotten you know Sandra Bland um, they are included in my new book what if a controversial paradigm shift in regards to the precedent paradigm shift and so uh, without further ado uh, I want to get right into it and show you guys you know um, again give you the excerpts and you know my book what if a controversial paradigm shift and again please be advised guys that this is a grown folks only um, book so again if you can't take this type of heat then don't bother coming to this kitchen again um, the gist of this book what if a controversial paradigm shift is to encourage and promote constant thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America and in the way that it's set up it's meant to make you share your opinion. It's meant to make you think. Of course, it will ring some bells and ruffle some feathers. That's that's the point of it, you know, because a lot of the times, you know, people often sugarcoat and sweep under the rug what's really going on. So the way that I've set this book up, you know, a mirror image of, you know, what's going on, however, just in a different paradigm shift, you know, to make you guys think and to share your opinions. So again, even if you don't like what I'm saying or showing you guys, share that opinion tell why you don't think that is and then of course uh usually you know the way it goes other people you know will counter that with their opinion and then before you know it you're having the conversation that needs to be had whether if it goes nowhere fast nothing beats a failure but a try so <laughs> that's just what your girl different is doing um and so with that being said you know check the video out don't forget to like share comment and subscribe to my youtube channel once you get done watching the video hit that subscribe button you guys i do appreciate all the love and support that i am getting um but be sure to you know you know get on the wagon while you can now don't wait till you know i take off and i blow up and then you want to get on the bandwagon nah um so get into it. Let's let's get right into it. Um, hope you guys enjoy. Check it out, and then I'll come back on and share more information with you guys on what's going on in the difference world. So here it is. What if Barack Obama was the first white president of the United States of America? What if, during President Obama's entire term in the White House, he was faced with issues, verbal attacks, death threats, and racial rumors of being a non-U.S. citizen? February 26, 2012, a 17-year-old white kid named Trayvon Martin was walking home from the store but never made it home because he was shot and killed by a person who racially profiled him. What if this black man who disobeyed orders not to follow Trayvon after he racially profiled him, yet was still found not guilty for his death? What if Tamir Rice was a 12-year-old white boy playing with a pellet gun and was killed by a black policeman? What if Eric Garner was a white man who died after a black NYPD officer put him in a deadly chokehold? What if it took five years for the black police officer who caused Eric's death to be terminated from the New York Police Department? What if Freddie Gray was a white man? handcuffed and thrown into the back of a police van without being told what he was charged for until after he was arrested. What if Alton Stern was a 37-year-old white man shot dead at point blank range by two black officers? What if a white male named Ahmaud Arbery was out for a jog in his neighborhood when he was wrongfully accused of death, harassed, and killed by three black men? What if, on March 13, 2020, a 26-year-old white woman named Breonna Taylor was killed when Louisville police broke down her door and ultimately shot her multiple times? What if the officers involved were black and faced no charges for her unnecessary death? What if, on May 25, 2020, a white man named George Floyd died after a black police officer held his knee on the back of his neck 
8 minutes and 46 seconds. What if two innocent white protesters were fatally shot by a 17 year old black kid who felt entitled to defend his country with an AR 15 rifle? What if there was an organization of black people condoning his deadly actions? What if, in frustration of all the injustice white people faced in America, they formed a movement called White Lives Matter? What if the White Lives Matter movement was often dismissed and mocked by black people? What if there was a term called black privileges, a concept where societal privileges benefited black people over white people in America, under the same social, political, and economic circumstances? What if a Karen was a black woman a Karen is a projectory slang for an obnoxious, angry, entitled, and often racist middle-aged black woman who uses her privilege to get her way or police other people's behavior, specifically white people. What if, in a place called America, black police officers who shot and killed unarmed white people faced none or were acquitted of all criminal charges? What if the United States of America had a black president who took... Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoy watching uh, story time, our third story time, uh, What If, a precedent paradigm shift. Um, as you guys saw, I was showing, you know, images of, you know, controversial deaths and events that have occurred within the past few years uh, that have happened in the U.S. and within the African-American community. You know, you see, you know, excerpts and illustrations of, you know, Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and their situations and how they died. Um, and so when you see those illustrations like that, uh, for those who, who are in shock and it upsets you and it makes you mad, it makes you feel like, oh, you're just trying to, you know, stir up trouble. No, trouble's already been here. It, this is just a trouble that people like to ignore. And so, um, again, if this upsets you and it makes you feel like, you know, it's wrong to see, you know, a white woman having a gun pointed at her, you know, or, or a black man, you know, having his knee on a white man's neck and 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 he's yelling out i can't breathe then uh then that's how you know that's how you can tell you know a slight inkling you know of those who 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 may not even know it but still may be racist um and so again it's, the point of the book is to encourage thought-provoking conversations about systemic racism and for those who are mature enough to make it through you know the first three paradigms historical political and precedent and then they can make it to hypothetical then they will see that the book is not just about pissing off white folks or quote-unquote uh a tool that black people can use as as uh to be seen uh, to uprise against the white community. No, it's not. It's just simply meant to make you think about, you know, things that are going on and issues that need to be addressed and talked about, as well as, you know, it is my hope and prayer, you know, over time that, you know, these conversations that are being had about this book, it helps create, you know, that systemic change that is needed. I'm well aware that change does not happen overnight, guys, and it does not happen with just one person. And so it's gonna take more than one voice being heard and then it happening more than once. And so with this book, now that it's out in the world and it's ringing some bells and people were talking about it, this is a, a go-to, I, I feel, one of those go-tos that people can use, you know, to talk about that conversation. Not just about, you know, what white people did to black people in the past and what they're still still doing about, about quite frankly, I'm tired of talking about systemic racism. I want to talk about systemic change. So let's talk about, you know, things that we can do in this time now that we're living in to work on ways that are better, you know, for our future and the next generation. You know, what if this is a generation that plans to see for the next or the next? Who knows? You know, so nothing beats a failure but a try. And so here I am. And I hope you guys are doing your part as well. You know, whatever it is that you're doing, you know, make sure you do it well and do it with passion. Um, all right, and so with that being said, you guys, um, I'm going to get up out of here. I got to go back to work. I was on my break. You know, my mom will work until it goes, y'all. I'm writing my book, but, you know, still got to work and put in, in time. So with that being said, you guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Don't forget, like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So hit that subscribe button, y'all, as well as uh, what I got going on next. Um, I'm about to drop another uh, travel video, uh, my trip to, where was it, what is this, Columbia? So yeah, you guys will see me in Columbia. Uh, I went uh, paragliding in SOPA. I did like 20, 30,000 feet in the air. So I got videos for that. Hope you guys enjoyed that. So be on the lookout for that. 
Um, I got a couple podcast interviews coming up that I'm going to post in a little while. So be on the lookout for that as well. Uh, I got a lot going on, y'all. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But it is what it is. I'm going to get it by any means necessary. And I hope you guys are as well. Like I said, either they come back like Cardi B. Um, excuse me. Or they come up like Cardi B. Or they come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. So I'm on that come up. I don't know what y'all on. But I'm on that come up for me. And so um, y'all stay tuned for more. Um, thank y'all so much. Uh, don't forget whatever it is in life that y'all want to go after you have to manifest plan and prepare for it and then it will surely come to you no doubt about it difference world come and learn peace <laughs> have a good day everybody bye what if what if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading the tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if a controversial paradigm shift by author different 